Praise the Lord. Kogi State, are you there? I said, Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful day. Many things are going to take place here today. Monday is a special Monday. And this particular one in Kogi State, unforgettable. Something will happen to you there. Great miracle. I said great miracle. Somebody there is waiting to catch a miracle. Where are you? Raise up your hand as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you today. We exalt your holy name. We know that you love your people. And here we are in Kogi State, you love every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, every husband, every wife, everyone here tonight. Lord, I pray you will turn every life around in Jesus' name. And I'm asking, O oh Lord, that the study of your word, the reading of your word, the preaching from your word, exhortation from your word, will do great, miraculous wonders in every life, in Jesus' name. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let there be joy in this city. Let there be victory in this state. Peace, progress, and prosperity you grant to this state. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. For those who are joining us at our Bible study today, we're having a special Bible study in Lokoja, the capital of Kogi State. I need to tell those of you who are here, a Bible study is always a special time. And it's a time to study the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. Everybody shout, Bible. Bible. That's what B-I-B-L-E. Blessed instruction bringing life eternal. That's why we go to the word of God. It's a blessed instruction. It's a basic instruction before you get to the other side. And if you have the knowledge of the Bible and you read it, you understand it, you apply it, you believe it, and then it works in your heart, your problems are solved. And tonight, you are going to have a taste of what it means to study the Bible. And then from the study, it will be like a cord drawing supernatural power into your life. Somebody there tonight is going to have a miracle. Somebody there tonight, as we study and as we pray, something great and forgettable will happen to your life in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at Jude. Jude is an epistle just before the last book of the Bible. That is before Revelation. And I'm looking at verse 3. And in verse 3 I'm going to take the first part. Look at your Bible there. It says, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. You'll find in the middle of that verse the common salvation. The common salvation. That word common. It's talking about something very necessary for everyone. When we say, come on, that doesn't mean cheap. Like water is common. It's not cheap. Like light is common. That's not cheap. The air we breathe is common. That's not cheap. What does that mean, common? 
That is, whoever you are, a man, a woman, you need the air. It's a common need. Whoever you are, young or old, you need to breathe the air. It's a common need. And the same thing, as common as air, as common as water, as common as the ground we step on, as common as the necessities of life, to keep you alive and to keep you moving and to keep you making progress in that same way salvation is needful is necessary for everyone that's why it says over there the common salvation now that thing that is called common understand this word is also comprehensive that means Everything you need, for example, let me come back, water. You drink water, you bath with water, you cook with water, you wash your clothes with water. Comprehensive. They need water everywhere. University, college, school, primary, village, everywhere. Everywhere you need that water. It's common, it's comprehensive. And there's nothing you can do. All those chemists, they need water. All the pharmacists, they need water. Engineer, they need water. Everybody is comprehensive. It does a lot of things. Salvation is comprehensive. It does a lot of things in your life. That's why tonight, as I'm looking at this, and you are waiting for something. Anybody waiting there? As you are waiting for something, I'm talking about the common, comprehensive salvation. Now. Nah. Water comes from somewhere. You cannot just say water, water, and then look at, uh, you know, an open space and get water. It comes from the ocean. It comes from the sea. And so when I say this water is common and is comprehensive, I say I get it from the well or I get it from the sea. This salvation that we're talking about, common, very costly comprehensive very important it's coming from somewhere it comes from christ and so the whole topic i'm talking about tonight the common comprehensive salvation in christ let me read that verse again once to you jude chapter one only one chapter verse three it says beloved when i gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation here this man actually minister this man as he calls himself the servant of jesus christ that's jude that's what jude is the shortened form of judas but it's reaching this way so you don't confuse it with judas iscariot this one was one of the children one of the sons of mary actually jesus born by virgin mary and then all the other children the men of the women born by joseph and mary and this is one of them and instead of saying i'm the brother of jesus and we came from the same mother it says i am jude the servant of jesus christ and as the servant of jesus christ the lord has sent you with a message and I sent you with that message unto you. You will receive the message. Somebody there said you will receive the message. And as you receive the message coming from the Lord Jesus Christ, something else will follow. You will have salvation. I said you'll have salvation. And the miracle you need will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And then he says, Beloved. What does that mean, Beloved. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's how you become a beloved. You say, you know, you'll be far away because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you say, I'm coming to Christ. I'll believe in Christ. I'll trust in Christ. I'll take Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. 
and then you become a beloved child of God. Now he's writing to such people, and this a message will be for you in Jesus' name. You become a beloved child. I said you become a beloved child. God will look at you and say, that's my child. That's my son. That's my daughter. And I love him very much. And he will introduce you to the angels of God in heaven. I thought Lord Kodja will say, Amen. Amen. Beloved, it says, when I gave all diligence to write unto you. Hold on, hold on. I gave all diligence. You see, there are people, they do not give diligence to what they do. But here, Jude is telling us, when God sends you to do something, when God tells you to do something, number one, diligence, carefulness, determination, discipline, that you say, here is something God has given me to do. And tonight, it's going to tell you to do something. And as you come as a servant of God, as a child of God, you say, see what Christ is telling me. And see what he expects of me. And with diligence. And now Jude is not even saying diligence ordinarily. He says, I give all diligence. I paid attention. You see, there are people who go to church. They don't know what the preacher says. They don't pay attention. There are people that come to the stadium like this. They don't hear what the preacher say. They don't pay attention. But Jude said, for me, when I hear the word of God, and he gives me that word to go and deliver. I give all diligence. Everybody shout, all diligence. All attention. I give my two ears. Thank you very much. I give my two ears. I give my mind. I give my heart. I look at that thing. I see that thing. I see the calling he's giving me. And I give all attention. And all my mind, all my concentration, and I focus on it. I give all diligence right unto you. Then it says, of the common salvation. I'm going to, I'm talking to you on the common comprehensive salvation in Christ. And then you are going to find everything you will ever need in life is in this salvation. I said it's in this salvation. And you have this tonight, you're going to, you're, you'll be surprised by heaven. God will surprise you with a miracle. He'll surprise you with an explosion. An explosion is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. As I look at this common, comprehensive salvation in Christ, I'm going to divide to three parts. Number one, universal. Universal. Something that is just all over the universe. The universal call to the common salvation. The universal call to the common salvation. That means there is no exclusion. That means there is no exception. That means for you there, for you there, for you up there. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with you tonight. Universal. It will sweep through this place. It's coming to your turn. I said it's coming to your turn. The universal call to the common salvation. Number two now is the unmistakable components of the comprehensive salvation. You see, when we say something is comprehensive, that means there are different, different parts to that salvation. How many people don't understand that? They say, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. I said, uh-uh. Are you saved? They say yes. I say tell me. And they only tell me one thing. And today you are going to have all the component parts of that salvation. I rejoice with you that you are here tonight. Something is going to happen to you. Your life will never remain the same again in Jesus name. The unmistakable component of the comprehensive salvation. Number three. Is the unrelenting commitment. Now that you've got something. Because you are getting something tonight. Somebody there said you are getting something tonight. Now that you get this thing. And you hold it. And you embrace it. And you say this is mine. Your untiring. Unrelenting commitment. 
until they consummate salvation. There's a final salvation. There's the ultimate salvation. There's the consummate salvation. And there is the perfect salvation that ushers you right to the presence of God in heaven. And he wants you to have, now you've got the universal common salvation. And then you have the unlimited, unmistakable components of that comprehensive salvation. And then you hold on. And you keep on. And you move on. Not just that, okay, I was there that night. That last Monday of the month of June 2016, I was there. And I said, okay, you were there. Are you committed to it unrelentingly, untiringly? Are you holding on to this? Because the miracle you get today will be permanent in Jesus' name. You get it today, you keep it in your heart, and then you're going on and on. And I see you going from victory to victory. From grace to grace. And from power to power. The things that defeated you before, thank God you are now an overcomer from today. Three things. Number one, the universal call to the common salvation. Come back to this, uh, to this Jude chapter 1 verse 3. As it says, it says, Beloved, Beloved, who is that now? I said, who is the Beloved here today? Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. You know, there, there are some people that have had some of them before. They say, well, I don't know whether I can be saved or not. They say, I hear about salvation. I hear about eternal life. But you know, I don't know whether it is for me or not. Can I tell you, it's a common salvation. It's common to everyone. That means it's available to everyone. That's the use of the word universal. Look at this. I'll read it to you if you don't have a Bible. It's Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. And I'm reading this. By the time you hear, you're not, okay, that's what it means. Universal call to the salvation of the Lord. Come on, available to everyone. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22. Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. You see that? It says all the ends of the world. Everybody that is as on that end. And you are by that end. And you are by that end. And you are by that end. It says look unto me. Look unto me. Salvation is for you. It's come on. It's universal. It's available to everyone. And then you understand when you get that salvation that is coming from God. Look at this now. God is not stingy with his water. He gives the water to everyone. God is not stingy with the air that we breathe. He gives the air to everyone. God is not stingy with all the provisions he makes. The rain comes from for everybody. And the salvation of God is for you tonight. I said it's for you tonight. That's why it said, look unto me, all the ends of the earth, and be you saved, because I am God, and there is none else. In fact, as we come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. You, you see what it means when it says, it's a universal call. No exception. It's a universal call. No exclusion. It's a universal call. You cannot say, I'm on this side of the fence. I'm on that side of the fence. Therefore, maybe salvation is not for me. It, the word of God is telling you. The Bible is telling you. Bible, that's blessed instruction, bringing life eternal. It tells you that their salvation is yours. Thank God is for me. I say, thank God is for me. I say, thank God is for me. Look at this. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. What does that mean? Whosoever. That means anybody, everybody. All you need to do is call. 
All you need to do is come. All you need to do is say, I want salvation. I believe Jesus died, and he died for me, and that salvation will come to your heart. Because it says right there, that whosoever, put your name there, whosoever, what's your name? Whosoever, I said what's your name? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that person, as you put your name, as you call upon the Lord tonight, thank God you are saved. I said, thank God you'll be saved. Look at this. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And here I'm reading from verse 14. Interesting. Very, very instructive. It says in uh, chapter 3 verse 14, it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. He was uh, talking to them about what he was going to do. And he wanted everybody to know that this I'm going to do, I'm going to Calvary. I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to shed my blood, that is to shed my blood, so that there'll be salvation. So that there'll be eternal life. And then he wanted to assure everyone, this is not only for the Jews. You, you see, there are people that say, this salvation, this Christianity is for the people who are white. Uh -uh. Don't ever say that again. It says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Then look at this now, in verse 15, that whosoever... That's you there again. That whosoever, who is that? I said, who is that? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Wonder of all wonders, tonight you can have eternal life. Miracle of all miracles, tonight you can have eternal life. Because it says in verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, wonderful, is saying that every time, so that you will not miss it. You will not say, I don't know whether I'm there or not. You are there. I don't know whether I can get it or not. You will get it in Jesus' name. That whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I will not perish. I said, I will not perish. You know why? Because it's whosoever, whosoever believeth in him. And I put my name there. And I said, no, I will not be lost. No, I will not spend eternity with Satan. No, I will not die the death of a sinner, the death of a criminal. I'm going to be saved. He'll forgive my sin. He will change my life. He will give me eternal life because he said, whosoever believeth, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe Jesus will be your Savior in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'm reading to you so that you'll not say that man said, uh-uh, it's not me. It's not me. This is what the Bible says. Blessed instruction bringing life eternal to you tonight. And this is how that life eternal comes to you tonight. In Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 11. It says, for the scripture says, not me. For the scripture says, that's what scripture there means, holy book, holy writing, coming from behind the heart of God in heaven. It says, for the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Are you there? I said, are you still there? Whosoever, who is that? Is calling upon you tonight. It's saying this thing is common to everybody. It's available to everybody. That if you will not be ashamed, ashamed of your sin in eternity, ashamed of your guilt as a sinner, ashamed of your condemnation when you stand before the judgment throne of the Almighty God. It says, if you will not be ashamed on that day, that you are not one of the people saying, okay, I give money to this, I give money to that, I'm a good person, uh -huh. you'll be ashamed of that. Because, you know, no matter how good you are, and no matter what good works you do, 
they cannot measure up and match up to the salvation that Christ has made available. But as you say, I know whosoever believes in him will not be ashamed. And then you come, you say, Lord, I believe, I believe. I believe you died for me. I believe you took my sins away. I believe I will be saved even now. That eternal shame will get away from your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. But there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. That's why it's common. That's why it's common. That is, there's no difference. God is not saying, I favor A and then I don't want B. I favor everyone. I make my salvation available to everyone. It says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That's the condition there. All that call upon him, you will call on the Lord tonight. I said you'll call on the Lord tonight. And that thing that is called salvation from heaven and from the very heart of God will come in your soul. Will come in your spirit. Tonight is the night of your salvation. Somebody there said tonight is the night of your salvation. Then in verse 13, here we come to that word again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, don't have any doubt in your mind. As you come and you say, Lord, I'm calling. I'm a sinner. I want your salvation. It says, whosoever is talking about the man there. Whosoever is talking about the woman there. Whosoever is talking about somebody that is, you are hearing the Bible for the first time in your life. It says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You are coming for the first time today. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, salvation. Available for everyone. Available for you. The Lord will save you. It will change your life. You see, I'm reading all these references of the Bible so that you will not think I'm the one that is just uh, mentioning that. You will know. Here is the message of God for you. In 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. It says, for this is good. Of course, of course. When there's no discrimination, this is good. Of course. When there's no exclusion, this is good. Of course. When there's no exception, when you can come, he can come, she can come, everybody can come and have their salvation, this is good. That's why it says in verse 3, but this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Look at the next verse. Who will have all men to be saved? Who will have all men to be saved? All. All. Anybody part of all there? Part of all. All. What are you? Wonderful. Salvation is coming your way. That salvation will get you. It's coming from Christ. And when you say, Lord, I believe... That Jesus died for me. It says in that verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. You are coming to the knowledge of the truth. The Lord wants you to have this truth. You will have it. I said you will have it. As you come and you say Jesus here I am. I want your salvation. Because you told me it's common. You told me it's available. You told me it's universal. You told me it's for the whosoever. And Lord, I come. It will receive you and give you that salvation. Just one verse for this section. Look at Second Peter now, chapter 3. Second Peter, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. In Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards words. He'll remove the pollution of sin from your life. 
Not only that, there's the penalty of sin. Number one, pollution. The pollution of sin. It takes that away for everyone, anyone who comes. And then there's the penalty. It takes the penalty, the punishment. It takes that away. And when we talk of punishment, we're talking about real, real punishment with capital P. Because if you sin against the almighty God, the punishment will be mighty. If you sin against the eternal God, the punishment will be eternal. If you sin against a great God, the punishment will be very great. And then God says, I provided salvation for you. I will take away that great punishment, that mighty punishment, that eternal punishment, it'll take everything away. Salvation from the pollution of sin. Salvation from the penalty of sin. Salvation from the power of sin. You know, sin has power. You say, I will not do that anymore. Sin said, no, I'm more powerful than you are. And that sin comes again. And you do it. You need help. And it's a common help available to everyone. Tonight, the Lord will help you. That sin you have been battling with, it will save you from the power of sin. Number one, it saves you from the pollutions of sin. Number two, it saves you from the penalty of sin. Number three, it saves you from the power of sin. Number four, from the presence of sin. You see, in one of the Bible passages, uh, I don't want to read too many for, to you tonight. It says, I do the things I don't want to do. And the things I want to do, that I cannot do. It says, you know why? Because of the sin that lives inside me, the presence of sin, the Lord will take that presence of sin away. Tonight you are free. I said tonight you are free. I am free. Where are you? He will set you free tonight in Jesus' name. And let me come to the second part of what we're looking at. I'm looking at Jude once again. I'm looking at Jude chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 3. Jude chapter 1, verse 3, beloved. It says, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Now, I'm coming to this salvation now. I'm looking at that salvation from this other angle. Which angle is this? The comprehensive angle. That is, we say that salvation is comprehensive. It has many, many parts. Let me just tell you, number one, in salvation, there is forgiveness. Forgiveness. And it is the forgiveness. It's not the kind of forgiveness to think about. You see, you have, you have committed 100 sins. You have committed 3,000 sins. And then one by one, okay, you mentioned this, I forgive you. This, I forgive you. Uh, not that one. He bundles everything together. All the sins you ever committed in your life, from A to Z, from small to big, from little to great, from crime to transgression, he bundles everything together and he forgives you. Wonderful. You have forgiveness tonight. I said you have forgiveness tonight. In salvation, we have forgiveness. Number two, in salvation, we have freedom. Because you see, sin is like a cord. When you sin once, there's a rope tied around you. Second time, another rope tied around you. And then as you're sinning and sinning and sinning, you're bound. You are helpless. You are hopeless. And you are not free. Even if you want to jump, you cannot jump. You want to run, you cannot run. You want to do something good, you cannot. Because you are bound by the cord of your sin. And when salvation comes, freedom comes. Somebody there, you are free tonight. All that rope of sin, all that cord of sin that binds you, everything is totally removed. Number three, there is conversion. There is conversion. What's conversion? You see, sometimes you see a piece of paper. The piece of paper is useless. 
Nobody needs it. They just throw it away. You cannot even use it to write a letter. You cannot use it to write a note. You cannot use it even privately. When you go to, you know, to ease yourself, the paper is useless. And then we collect the paper. And then we take it to a particular place. There's a machine over there. They call it a converter. And it will then process it. And that useless paper is converted to something useful. Tonight, conversion will come to you. That useless life will become useful. That dirty life will become clean. Because it is part of the salvation we're talking about. Number one, the component parts of salvation. Number one, there's forgiveness for you. He will forgive you tonight. Number two, there is freedom. He will set you free tonight. Number three, conversion. There's going to convert your soul tonight. You'll be a pleasant child from tonight. Happy child of God from tonight. Number four, there's reconciliation. What does that mean? You see, every sinner is saying, I don't want God. I don't like God. He's my enemy. And God is angry with the sinner every day. There is enmity between the sinner and the almighty God. Because you see, two cannot work together except they be agreed. And because of your sin, you've turned your back against God. Salvation brings settlement. All the enmity is cancelled. And there's reconciliation. It says, you are not an enemy anymore. You are my beloved child. Beloved child. Any beloved child there tonight? He will do that in your life. You see, that's what we're talking about. In salvation, there's forgiveness. In salvation, there's freedom. In salvation, there's conversion. In salvation, there's reconciliation. In salvation, there is regeneration. Regeneration is when you generate something new. Something new. You become a new person. Your heart new. Your spirit new. Your attitude new. Everything about you new. There is regeneration. In salvation, there's deliverance. You see, the devil pursues every sinner. Because the devil says, that's my property. That's my slave. And what can you do? A slave of Satan. A slave of evil. That's why what you want, what you don't want to drink, you drink, of course. What you don't want to wear, you still wear. The lies you don't want to tell, you still tell. Because you're under a power that you cannot be free from. But then salvation comes and God tells the devil, take your hand away from that one. It's now my child. It's now my property. Am I talking about somebody there today? Satan will take his hand away from you. All the oppressive spirits will take their hands away from you in Jesus' name. Because there is deliverance in salvation. Number seven, adoption. Adoption. You see, it's like you're an orphan. God says, it's not my child, it's a sinner. Jesus said, it's not my follower, it's a sinner. The Holy Spirit says, uh -uh, I don't know him. He drinks sin like water. He eats sin like food. And then salvation comes. And then God says now, I adopt you into the family of God. There's adoption in the family of God. You just wake up and say, praise the Lord. I even feel different now. I'm a child of God. Adoption. You see what, what we're talking about? The component parts of salvation. And now there is what we call, if you adopt into the family of God, there's sonship. Sonship. That's why it says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, you have sonship. And then number nine, you have a new life, a new life. I look at you and I say, that's new. I hear your language, I say, that's new. I, he I see your love and your affection, and I say, that's new. I see your relationships, I say, that's new. Because in this salvation, new life comes. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. 
Behold, things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And then, number 10, there is redemption. Redemption. It's like you've been in the slave market. And then, your price of freedom, jubilee, liberty, redemption has now come. And you're taken out of slavery. That's what you have. Let me read some scriptures to you for you to understand that tonight you're free. I said tonight you're free. Look at John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 36. It says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son of God, looking at you now, wanting to save you now, wanting to turn your life around, it says, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I see somebody getting free there today. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 5 and verse 31. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Look at what it says over here. It says him, referring to Jesus, as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. He gives that. You don't pay for that. That's a gift. You come to him and he gives you that forgiveness. He gives you freedom. He gives you forgiveness. And then we're looking at um, Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, I'm reading from verse 6. See what this king was praying for. And the same thing he prayed for is what you're expected to pray for. Because it belongs to the king. It belongs to the subject. It belongs to the citizen. It belongs to the, it belongs to the leaders. It's common, available to everyone. Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Tonight you'll be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. That's only God can do that. Only God can do that. He'll wash your heart. He'll wash your mind. He'll wash your brain. All those things that you remember that will pull you back into the dirt again, he'll wash everything away tonight. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. It says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out how many of mine iniquities? All mine iniquities create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. He will do it for you tonight. A right spirit within you. Look at verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit you can see then the component parts you can see when salvation comes good good things come in your life i thought somebody there will say amen, amen. titus chapter 2 titus chapter 2 reading from verse 11 it says for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. You see that? Let us that again. All men. All men. Universal. It's common and yet comprehensive. And then it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly. As that salvation now has come, we're turned around. Conversion has come. A change has come. Transformation has come. We should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. In this present world. 
What are you going to have salvation in this present world? I said, what are you going to have forgiveness in this present world? When are you going to have freedom in this present world? When are you going to have conversion in this present world? All the component parts of salvation. When are you going to have that total salvation in this present world? Looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. You see that, number one, the common salvation available to everyone. Giving to everyone. Whosoever comes to him, he will not cast you away. He will receive you. He'll give you that salvation. Number two, we've seen the composite parts of that salvation. We've seen that forgiveness. We've seen that freedom. We've seen it. It, it includes conversion. It includes reconciliation. There is regeneration in it. There is deliverance in that salvation. And there is reconciliation. There is adoption in that salvation. There is sonship. There is a new life. And thank God, there's total redemption. And you know, as you come to Jesus Christ, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're sick, it will take that sickness away. Your blind eyes will open. Give me a good luck on your amen. Those who are lame tonight, you'll find the mighty power of the name of Jesus Christ. you rise up and walk in Jesus' name. And that thing, the devil packed inside your body and you're afflicted and you're attacked. When I pray in the name of Jesus and I say, come out, it comes out immediately. Because something miraculous is happening to you today. Miracle explosion coming upon your life today in Jesus' name. Number one, the common salvation. Everybody will receive. Any candidate of salvation there tonight? You are there, the Lord will bless you. Number two is the composite, is the comprehensive salvation. Number three now, our unrelenting commitment. Untiring commitment. Our commitment until the consummate salvation. See, many people don't understand. They come in at the door. And they stay at the door all their lives. Look up here for a moment. As you go to school, you enter the gate. And then you stay there at the gate. All through the hours of the day, you're at the gate. The people at home said, you've gone to school. The people inside the class, they said, no, you are not here. And then when we close in the day, you take your bag, you go back home. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from school. But you only stayed at the gate. Some people come at the gate like this. What I mean, they come to a crusade. They come to an evening like this and they hear the word of God. And they take one step and they get to the gate. And they stay at the gate there. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Come in. And as you come in, you continue. Because as you continue, you will conquer every problem in your life. Three things you are thinking about. Number one, calm. But that's just at the gate. Number two, continue. That is what gives you the victory for the rest of your life. Number three, you conquer. Somebody there, I said you conquer. Somebody there say, I will conquer. You come, then you continue, then you will. I want to hear you there. You will conquer in Jesus' name. 
Look at this now. Consummate salvation. Consummate. Consummate. Final salvation. Consummate salvation. Perfect salvation. And that is eternal. Once you enter through the gates of heaven, you are there forever and ever. Consummate salvation. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. There's something there when you get to heaven, it will be given to you. But what if you don't continue? What if you just stop at the gate? I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I went to the crusade. I gave my life to Christ. Continue. So that that inheritance he has for you in heaven. At the consummate salvation you will have. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God. Through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time ready to be revealed in the last time that's why jesus said we must continue thank god i will continue i said i will continue i said i will continue matthew chapter 24 in matthew chapter 24 verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. The same shall be, shall be saved. That's talking about consummate salvation, final salvation, eternal salvation. To continue to endure unto the end. My question is, how does that happen? How does that happen? One. Come. Everybody shout, come. What does that mean to come? In Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18. It says, come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come. Come out. Come in. Come now. Come out. Out of darkness. Come in. Come into the light. Come out. Come out of your sin. Come in. Come in to the Savior. Come out. Come out of evil. Come in. Come into the grace and the goodness of God. You come out. You come in. You come now. Come now. Today is the day of your salvation. You don't want to stay any longer with Satan in sin and suffering and sorrow. That's why it says, this is the day and this is the time to come. And it says, you come now so that it will forgive you. It will forgive you in Jesus' name. The next word is continue. Continue. Not just that I come and I stay at the gate, but you will continue. Somebody there, where are you? I said, where are you? I will continue. I will continue. I will continue. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 32. John chapter 8. We're looking at verse 32. In verse 32, look at what it says. And... Uh, 
Uh, let me back up to verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If ye continue, everybody shout the word continue. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed you will continue. You don't say, okay, I come to Christ on this beautiful Monday night, and then tomorrow you continue with Satan. I come to the Savior, and then tomorrow you continue with sin. I come to the light, and then tomorrow you continue in darkness. You will continue in Jesus' name. One, you continue in his righteousness. He gives you a gift. He says, I take your filthy garments away from you. And I give you my gift of righteousness. You continue in his redemption. You're free. I'm free indeed. I'm free forever. You will not go to bondage anymore in Jesus' name. You continue in his righteousness. You continue in his redemption. You continue until his revelation from heaven. Because he's going to come. And he'll it's, be looking for you. Because Jesus is coming again. And when he comes again, he'll be looking for the people that came. For the people that continued. For the people that conquered. I see a conqueror over there. I see an overcomer right there. You will conquer every sin. You will conquer Satan. You will conquer every sickness. Tonight is the night of conquering. Am I talking to somebody there? Tonight is the night of victory. And tonight is the night to overcome. Because it calls you to come and conquer. That's why the angel said in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. It will save you tonight. I said it will save you tonight. He said, because I overcame, you will overcome as well. Not only that, it's going to make you a conqueror over Satan. Over evil spirits. Over evil powers. When Christ comes in, Satan has to go out. When light comes in, darkness has to go out. And from tonight, you are a conqueror in Jesus' name. And then you will conquer every sickness. That cancer will not conquer you. That evil power will not conquer you. All that infirmity will not conquer you. I come. I continue. I conquer. Any conqueror there tonight? I said any conqueror there tonight? Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading here. From verse 16. It says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. And healed all that was sick. And healed, tell me, all that was sick. And healed, shout it out. All that was sick. You conquer sickness tonight. That sickness will not go back home with you. Miracle is coming your way. Extraordinary miracle. Extraordinary power. And then it says that it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. He'll take everything away. And then in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Well, you have to speak for yourself. In all these things, I, 
and more than a conqueror through Christ that gave himself for me because he loved me. I come. Say it for yourself. I come. I will continue. I'm a conqueror. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's now your personal decision for you to say, yes, today, the common salvation will be mine. Yes, today, that comprehensive salvation will be mine. Yes, today, I am pledging myself to continue until the consummate salvation. Forgiveness available. Freedom available. Conversion available. Reconciliation available. Adoption available. And becoming a child of God available. He will forgive all your sin. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you are making up your mind now. Lord I come. Lord I come. Lord I come. You raise up your hand. You say yes Lord. There's salvation. That's available for everyone. I want to have that salvation. And part of the whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Raise up your hand there, you want that salvation. In the pavilions over there, everywhere, on the seats over there, you raise up your hand. I want that salvation. Over here on the grounds in front of me, I want that salvation. Where are you? Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You say, yes, salvation, salvation, salvation is mine today. It's common, it's available, it can be yours today. Stand up right there and say, Lord, I want this salvation. Anywhere you are, you are raising up your hand. Because you want this salvation available to everyone. What are you? What are you? You are raising up your hand. Then you are standing up. Then you are standing up. Anywhere you are. Anywhere you are. And it's coming to you right now. Forgiveness will come. Freedom will come. You will be adopted into the family of God. You will be a child of God. It will take away the guilt and the condemnation of sin away from your life. You stand up if you're raising up your hand. I want that salvation. All right. As you're raising up your hand and standing up, you will pray after me. Are you ready? I said, Are you ready? You say it aloud and you say it from the depths of your heart. Almighty God, I thank you today. My eyes are opened. My understanding is enlightened. I know salvation is for me. I know Jesus died for me. I know forgiveness is mine today. I know freedom has come to me today. Lord Jesus shouted lord jesus forgive my sin lord jesus set me free from every sin lord jesus convert my soul change my life i believe i believe i believe my sins are forgiven. I believe I am free. I believe I've got salvation now. I promise. I promise. I promise. I will continue with Jesus, my Savior. And I will be a conqueror from today. Thank you, Lord. Say it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Raise up those two hands there. That means I surrender to Jesus. Raise up your hand. I'll pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all these who have come to Christ. And for all these who came out of sin. And they came to the Savior. Out of darkness, they have come to the light. 
Out of evil, they have come into your grace. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Set them free from every bondage of sin. Cleanse them from the pollution of sin. Cleanse them from the power of sin. Cleanse them from the presence of sin. And take away the penalty, the punishment of their sin. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. Let your spirit bear witness in their hearts. They are now children of God. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. It has happened. Now, we're going to do something very quickly. Our counselors will come to you right there. Keep on standing. Anywhere you are, all around the seats at the stadium, keep on standing. And those of us in front of me, keep on standing. Our counselors are coming. Our calling on our state pastor, Pastor Ego Jobichu, come and help us. Just a short time. And then, after that, huh, something is coming your way. Miracle explosion. Somebody shout miracle explosion. Miracle explosion. And, and after this time now, I'll come back and then those blind eyes will open tonight. Amen. And those people on the wheelchair you are getting up tonight. Amen. All those infirmities, all those sicknesses, they're going tonight. Just a short time. I can't sell us. Please help us very quickly. Can't sell us. Go inside them very quickly. Make sure you take their correct names and their telephone number, 11 digits, 11 digits. And then write also their residential address or the place of work or the place of business. Write their residential address or the place of work where they are where they are doing their business. Those who are students, write the name of your school. If you're in the university, write the name of your department. And then you also give other information like your age, you're an adult, you say adult, or male or female. If they can write, they'll give you the, the decision card, you write it quickly, and then they will collect it from you. They will check the details there. Counselors, give the cash to those who can write and let them write and give back to you, but check it. And those of you who cannot write, give them, number one, your correct name and your correct address and place of work or where you are learning a trade or the market where you are selling. And then your telephone number, your GSM, 11 digits. Write it very clearly as they give it to you, counselor. Write it very clearly. Write the names and the addresses in capital letter so we'll not have difficulty in reading them. If they are students, let them put their faculty or their department. Secondary school, let them put their school. Or primary school, let them put the name of their school, whether private school or public school. And then your age and all other details there. But those counselors stay there, you will see miracle today. And so, if you need healing, you need miracle, any problem in your life, you raise up one hand and you lay the other hand on yourself. And then I will pray, when you hear the final amen, that miracle is there already. And then you will check up. And then you will give a shout of praise to the Lord as we see that miracle. Are you ready? Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your love. We thank you because there's no exception. And there's no exclusion. Your salvation, your deliverance, your healing, your miracle is for everyone. And tonight I come and I pray you will bring all the miracles upon your people in Jesus' name. That spirit of insanity, I command you madness. Come out in Jesus' name. That swelling in your body, any part of your body, that swelling there, I command, vanish away in Jesus' name. 
and near over there be removed in Jesus name Lord I pray for anyone that is having cancer there you get healed right now Lord manifest your power cancer be healed in Jesus name that also I command you be healed in Jesus name tuberculosis cough be healed in Jesus name that thing that is tormenting your body walking from the brain to the body to every part of the body that moving object I command you come out in Jesus name Lord I pray for those people that are deaf and dumb I pray the Lord will touch your ears right now touch your vocal cords right now open that mouth and speak in Jesus name begin to hear in Jesus name Lord I pray for those who are blind touch those blind eyes glaucoma come out in Jesus name cataract come out in Jesus name those dim blind eyes be opened and begin to see clearly Lord perform that miracle of sight now in Jesus name those who have stroke, those who are paralyzed, lame in any way, I send forth the power of God upon your body. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Your waist remains, retains strength. Your ankles, your knees become strong. Every part of your body, resurrection power come upon you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that any part of the body that is missing, do a creative miracle. Creative miracle. Creative miracle. Touch them and do it in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere now, to the left, to the right, to the front, everyone, without exception, touch everyone. Heal everyone. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let those blind eyes see right now. Lame legs walk right now. Deaf and dumb hear right now. And all the sicknesses vanish away right now. Confirm the miracle. Confirm the healing. Confirm the deliverance. Thank you because I know it is done. I know it is done. In Jesus name I pray. Praise the Lord it has happened. Check it up, check it up, check it up. You see the miracle right there. 